as i stated that this case unfolded uh with two basic uh, terms that's not providing of the medical records to the patient in time as well as not diagnosing a particular condition resulting in a catastrophic outcome for a baby boy born in the hospital the case would be uh, discussed and the other nuances of the litigation would be discussed on the following heads before we uh, commence a discussion about uh, the matter that is the subject matter of today's presentation again uh, like uh, always i would like to get the entire uh, gathering in the forum in one particular common podium that who are the litigants and who are the respondents at the outset we must understand when the matter is in the consumer court the complainants are the petitioners make the complaint and the hospitals doctors and other parties are the respondents now if the compensation claim is agreed and allowed by the uh, consumer court and an appeal from that is framed in a supreme court on a higher authority then the respondents in the original lawsuit becomes the appellant and the applicants or the petitioners of the original lawsuits become respondents so in this case appellants are maharaja agrasen hospital and three doctors whereas the respondents here in the supreme court in this matter are the rishab sharma the patient and the mother and his elder brother they are the three respondents now the appeal in honorable supreme court rested against the judgment given by learned nc drc on 10th may 2016 the matter before ncdrc was that there was a preterm baby delivered in sharma medical hospital by dr rama sharma the child was immediately shifted to agrasen hospital as the baby was preterm appropriate for gestation suffering from hyaline membrane disease and thereafter after discharge from the hospital post four weeks stay over there subsequently the baby developed retinopathy of prematurity or rop which as per the complainants in the original lawsuit and respondents here before the supreme court denied that they have ever been informed about this and no investigation was carried out much to the dismay that medical records were also not provided to them which was contested by the hospital and the doctors in this compensation for damage case there were basically three considerations first the lscs that was performed on the preterm pregnancy was performed in a haste and without a pediatrician the second point was deficiency of service amounting to res ipsa locator wherein the diagnosis of rop was not made and also medical records were not produced or not provided to the applicant or petitioner aggrieved by the same in fact in this case a compensation suit of 1 crore 30 lakhs 25000 rupees was initiated by the complainants or petitioners in the original money suit wherein the court allowed a sum of 64 lakhs agreed by this compensation amount which was only of 64 lakhs a civil litigation or civil appeal was filed in supreme court and also the hospital and the doctors who were ordered to pay the money jointly and severally was also agreed by the compensation amount and they filed a civil suit in supreme court these two matters were clubbed for final hearing now how did the fact of this case unfold the patient master rishav was a 32 week preterm baby delivered in sharma medical center by dr ramasha the mother was a known case of placenta previa and she had a bleeding episode in the month of march 2005 and the patient was shifted or rather seen 
in Sucheta Kriplani Hospital, where bleeding could be arrested. But when her expected date of del delivery was in June, she went on labor with premature rupture of membrane and bleeding on 2nd April 2005 itself. She was operated through lower segment caesarean section and the patient was found to be suffering from hyaline membrane disease and in the same evening the neonate was shifted to A1 hospital. When I say A1 I mean epaulette number 1 that is the Agrasen hospital. In the same evening that is on 2nd April 2005. At the time of admission the child was of birth weight 1.49 kg. He was diagnosed of having hyperbilirubinemia, high line membrane disease, bilateral pneumothorax, which he was gradually he was in the process of developing, also with fungal septicemia. The patient was treated, was given mechanical ventilation, walked up for the entire gamut of investigations, including arterial blood gas analysis. A patient was a tube thoracotomy was performed on the patient to relieve him of the pneumothorax. Patient was put on mechanical ventilator, as I stated. Initially, patient was kept in a semi-private ward and at the request of the patient, they were shifted to general ward. The patient's condition improved and when it was satisfactory, patient stabilized. The weight gain was there to 1.56 kg. The patient was discharged. It would be noteworthy that at the time of admission, the patient was seen by two pediatricians, one Dr. G.S. Kocha, who was a uh, impaneled doctor in that hospital, and Dr. Naveen Jain was a consultant pediatrician. And later on, the child was referred to Dr. S. N. Cha, a senior consultant of thalmology. However, it was alleged that at no stage any advice of carrying out ROP tests or instruction for getting it done on any designated day in the ophthalmic department or in the OPD was given, neither in the discharge slip nor on the progress note. It is seen from the case sheet that the child was advised to come back to the hospital on special clinic, which happens in the hospital on Wednesday and Saturday at 4 p.m. Instead, the child was brought on 4th May and thereafter on 13th September in the hospital. However, none of these visits, as claimed by the respondent in this present lawsuit, was ever been advised or never ROP was checked. Rather, on their visit on 13th July, a BERA scan, that is brainstem evoked response audiometry, was performed. However, no advice for ROP checkup was again given. Since November 2005, late November 2005, actually on 23rd November 2005, the mother noticed an abnormal visual response of the baby and the child was taken to Nayantara Eye Clinic, wherein a uh, B scan, an ultrasound B scan was performed on him. The child was diagnosed to be suffering from ROP, that is retinopathy of prematurity. And then the child was shown to Dr. Shaw's Charity Hospital, where the USS B scan confirmed the diagnosis made in Nayantara Eye Clinic and stated that it is stage 4 disease with a complete detachment of retina has taken place. And child is absolutely blind at that stage. The baby was immediately taken to the private OPD of R1 hospital. The doctor, that is Dr. S. N. Jha, referred the patient to Shankar Nitralaya without mentioning any admission, prior admission or other clinical uh, details of the case. The patient was actually then taken to Ames where the diagnosis of ROP was confirmed. 
thereafter from the patient side repeated requests for medical records were made however two years have passed no medical record was provided to the complainant or the patient aggrieved by the same concurrently the patient and the relatives the mother filed a compensation lawsuit in learned ncdrc wherein as i stated before a compensation claim of 1 crore 30 lakhs 25000 was made concurrently a request for a, a complaint rather of, of for obtaining the medical records were sent to delhi medical council delhi medical council issued notice and it is only after notice from the delhi medical council or dmc that the hospital handed over case sheets to the patient taking this as a res if a locator available on the face of record and also the fact that as stated in the case sheets in the page 102 wherein it was mentioned that rop test was done on the patient on 26th april 2015 just prior to discharge of the patient from the hospital the complainants refuted this claim before ncdrc they stated that they absolutely intrigued by this statement as they distinctly don't remember that the child has ever been tested for rop nor there has been any note of how the test was done as it is a team uh, effort by the pediatrician of thalmologist and the pediatric nurse the medications are given no nurse note was also made available to them neither ever after there had been any mention that rop has been done or to be redone or conducted also in the meanwhile ncdrc has asked an expert report from aims which was strongly objected to and refuted by the complainants that is before ncdrc stating that aims has typically stayed with the statement made and the case sheet given by agrasen hospital and they have not analyzed the matter at all aims report held that the patient was advised to do rop on a given date when patient did not report also they mentioned that rop conducted on 26th april 2015 which is merely 4 weeks or 5 weeks after the birth there is a chances that rop could not be diagnosed or could not be witnessed by the ophthalmologist is a normal phenomenon this particular statement was challenged and also reliance were placed on honorable supreme court judgment in v krishna kumar versus state of tamil nadu and others where exactly same incident took place and the doctors on a preterm premature baby failed to investigate for rop resulting in the blindness of the child in that case so these were the contentions made by the complainant in the original money suit and now respondent before the supreme the perspective the perspective of the respondents were what the principle of rest lips occurred should be invoked or not that was one point before the bench also the fact that at no stage appellant conducted an rop is a gross violation from the accepted prevalent norm for investigation of such premature child especially when packed cells were infused the patient was given oxygen therapy phototherapy for hyperbilirubinemia all these are precursors of developing vasculature on the retina and also rop so the entire process of rop examination was not conducted the appellate number 1 that is the hospital deliberately held back to interpolate the medical records to substantiate their claim standard protocols were not undertaken by them 
and therefore also the quantum of compensation of ncdrc is grossly inadequate as ncdrc completely failed to take note or appreciate the situation that this small boy needs constant medical treatment visual and auditory aids which needs to be purchased he needs transportation to go to school for specially able children his clothing his medical need probably need of an attendant his loss of marriage opportunity loss of getting a job opportunity to get a job all are severely compromised so ncdrc was was not appropriately calculated the compensation whereas appellants contested all these claims on following grounds firstly the hospital said that it is a charitable trust and treated the particular case almost freely to the extent of 50000 rupees in terms of 10 days ventilation and various drugs also admission in icu it is stated that there was it's on record and not contested that the baby was received in a very critical condition he was having fungal septicemia there were bilateral pneumothorax the body weight was very low and there are other complications also all standard investigations and treatment protocols were followed and patient was continuously informed the parents of the patient were continuously informed about the critical condition of the baby as well as possible effect on the neurological visual and hearing impairment or damages as contested by the complainant and the respondents here rop was actually performed on 26 4 which and the fact that the rop was performed was appended in page number 102 of the medical records provided which was performed 4 weeks after birth and not all cases of rop would be signs for rop would be visible to the doctor in 4 or 5 weeks at that time probably it was missed out but as the patient was advised to report back after 2 weeks the patient did not report back and therefore the hospital is not to be blamed several test textbooks and medical literatures were relied upon by them wherein the protocol of treatment as well as screening uh, protocols were shown it was stated that in extreme prematurity there can be a rush disease patient may develop signs of rop even 2 to 3 weeks time but that is a very rarity patient develops rop gradually between 4 to 6 weeks therefore even at the first instance it was missed out there is no negligence they produced medical records to substantiate their claim substantiate their claim the fact that observed by learned ncdrc that the what medication was used anesthetic note note of the pediatric nurse pediatrician whether a uh, indirect ophthalmoscopy was performed or not which type of drug was used whether it was a tropicamide with phenylephrine or it was cyclopentolate whatever has been used how it was used nothing is mentioned to which it was stated that this is a normal procedure in ophthalmic opd an ophthalmoscope is available everywhere the drugs are available in the nursery so therefore mentioning them specifically was not required and not the correct way of uh, doing the record keeping so therefore that was not mandatory this was stated by the hospital and great reliance was placed on the expert opinion of aims which actually echoed the medical record produced by the hospital now with all this the issues that was before the court was was inordinate delay in supply of medical records amounts to negligence supreme court went into regulations of then indian medical council now commission were in regulation 1.3.2 of professional conduct ethics and etiquettes and ethics regulation 2002 mandates the record would be produced within 72 of hours of asking of the same records should be kept for 10 years and also rule 7 and 
clearly delineates that not keeping of the record or not production of the record even after 72 hours amounts to negligence and disciplinary actions are liable to be taken on them second question that was before the court was whether a failure to diagnose retinopathy of prematurity amounts to negligence now it is settled it is no more a res integra that missing out a treatment protocol per se does not amount to negligence but what amounts to negligence is that deliberately omitting the steps or doing something which is against the standard protocol or omitting to do something which the standard protocol mandates to be done in this particular case supreme court noticed certain clearing omissions firstly they stated that it might have been the patient did that the patient did not report two weeks after discharge the discharge took place on 26th april 2015 the patient probably uh, have not reported at that time but definitely the patient came later on several occasions so therefore the fact that patient did not report at all is not true second part is that this was very critical supreme court went into each page of the document and found that the entry of one page number 102 was malicious in the sense it was only scribbles made at the corner of the page how supreme court went about seeing this document is very interesting ladies and gentlemen firstly they stated that in every page the way the page is written the medical record is kept page number 102 was an exception in every page there is a date and time in a particular color whereas in page 102 the mentioning of rop no rop seen is at the corner and not where it is supposed to be there was no timing given and on the page 103 which mentions day 28 that is the last day of remaining in the hospital and it gives a time of 1000 hours at the top of the page meaning thereby between 102 page number 102 and 103 there had been no examination conducted and the scribble at the bottom of the page of page 102 was made later also the court made some scathing remarks about the medical board constituted by aids in this particular matter the court referred back to a judgment of ramesh chandra agarwal versus regents hospital in this particular matter supreme court had held that the job of the expert committee are to lay before the court various facets various aspects which has encouraged them or which has directed them to reach their conclusion the court the bench are not medical experts if everything is put before the bench then they can make a considered decision to reach a conclusion it was held that the expert body of aims merely towed the line of the medical records did not try to envisage or instigate or investigate and see that why even after the patient had reported late or otherwise still no rop repeat rop was conducted the question of medical negligence and duty of care court cited various judgments from uh, the case of lakshman balakrishna joshi versus trimbak papu godbole to aparna datta versus apollo hospital chennai was cited the court held that once a doctor holds himself out to be competent to treat a case the composite responsibility to see whether to undertake the case 
if the case is undertaken what treatment is to be given and if a treatment has to be has been given how the treatment has to be administered is the entire responsibility of the doctor the caregiver and the hospital any breach in these three duties would result in a medical negligence lawsuit the question also arose before the court that whether delay in providing medical record amounts to deficiency of service and deficiency of service to the extent that it would be would to tantamount to be the omission of the nature of res ipsa now what actually forms res ipsa res ipsa is a doctrine that says a particular damage or injury would not have otherwise taken place but for the negligent action of doctor therefore the burden of proving that there had been no res ipsa lies heavily on the doctor and the hospital i give certain examples say injection of penicillin has been given without testing the drug i sincerely hope you all are aware a harjo lalu walia versus spring meadow hospital injection chloroquine was given intramuscularly whereas some other drug was to be given there had been cases cited in which a patient developed brachial para, 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 paralysis brachial plexus paralysis in which hand has been kept in an extended position for a very long time during operation a treatment of gastric ulcer resulting in paralysis in the lower limb such facts inside the ot which was could be in only because of some action or omission done by the doctors may amount to receipts a locutia not otherwise so court did not really state that not providing medical records would amount to receipts a locutia but definitely court exceeded to the contention that it is definitely to be regarded as a defic deficiency of service now another point that was before the court that does non diagnosing rop retinopathy of prematurity would amount to medical negligence here again court stated that various literatures various screening protocols various planning protocols of dealing with premature baby for rop it was mandatory that the doctor would have gone for these testings no record not even a yota of not even a whisper of mentioning that the rop has to be done or to be conducted neither the patient was ever informed about the requirement of rop or existence of such disability the fact that is that even after 26th during subsequent visit rop was not conducted by the hospital therefore it definitely amounts to medical negligence third question before the supreme court was was maharaja agras agrasen hospital vicariously liable the answer was resound, a resounding yes the supreme court held that whatever be the terms of contract between the doctors and the hospital somebody may be a visiting consultant somebody may be an enrolled doctor the hospital has to be held responsible for defi deficiency of service as they are the main service provider and the person comes to a hospital by its name therefore whatever uh, the doctors in the hospital does the hospital is liable vicariously and cannot e uh, exit this responsibility or this responsibility can is not extinguishable also the question before the supreme court was whether correct recompensatory mechanism was adopted by learned ncdrc generally the court completely agree with the compensation procedure made out by ncdrc but they did say something in the line of prashant s dhanaka versus nizam institute they said that court should not jump upon with lot of zeal and enthusiasm to award compensation doctors are very important commodities 
therefore doctor should not leave under the shade of suspicion of litigation and compensation burden they should not leave with the fear of prosecution and be susceptible to damages therefore on one hand it is true that petitioner makes sky high compensation claims at the same breath it would not be appropriate to say that the hospitals are waived of all its responsibilities while making compensation so a very very middle path a very appropriate path should be taken as per the case may be and one may be liberal if there is actual financial burden in this particular case during the process uh, father of the patient father of master rishab died he was a temporary worker in delhi municipal corporation the mother was earning a paltry sum of about 5 to 7000 rupees the child was of receipt of some government scheme money which is about 2 to 3000 rupees so therefore court computed what would have been the cost what would have been the expenditure level and out of that expenditure level how much they would have otherwise spent on the on the patient that is master rishab therefore the appeal of the hospital and the doctors were dismissed court augmented the compensation money to 76 lakhs to be paid jointly and severally of which 50 lakhs is directed to be deposited in a post office in a time deposit scheme and the interest would go to mother she can spend it judicially 4 lakh 50000 was directed to be invested in mis account and on maturity it would all the entire money would go to master rishab some fd amount was directed to be made and 15 lakhs were allotted to the mother 1 lakh litigation cost was directed to be given to the respondents who stated that they are fighting the case pro bono that is free of cost now what was the ratio of coming to this particular judgment <clears throat> it was apparent before the court that the medical documents were interpolated and probably that is the reason of a very delayed or non submission of the medical records to the patient themselves secondly they also held that actually tests for retinopathy or prematurity the screening test was never conducted by the hospital as neither it was advised nor it was mentioned anywhere and also while referring the patient for shankar netralaya dr jha never mentioned about the rop that has been conducted or never mentioned anything about the admission and treatment of the child it was stated that doctors were completely oblivious to the fact the patient was given packed rbcs and this packed rbcs are of from the adult donors which is very high in 2 3 dpg though they carry less oxygen they are very high in 2 3 dpg and releases the 2 3 dpg in the target tissue resulting in very high oxygen demand in those tissues coupled with oxygen therapy the oxygen and tents that were put on the phototherapy given all these would have cautioned the doctors well in time to have done the rop screening tests also the court noticed through various literatures after examining various literatures they came to the conclusion that rop does not develop in one go the child was not born with rop there are various stages and up to stage 3 rop is generally treatable even up to stage 3 where the macula is spared and the some central portion of retina is spared if at that time also intervention in the form of cryopexy or laser photocoagulation or injection of anti endothelial growth factors be given it could have resulted in a better outcome none of them could be tried but for omission of doing the rop screening on the child therefore the child lost vision and now it would be an apple task a task for a single mother to bring up the child so therefore taking that into consideration various uh, 
literature on wholesale price index variations inflation special expenditures the court hiked the compensation amount and held the hospital vicariously responsible for paying the damages now what we understand we take home from here there is no doubt that a compensation culture is brewing and it is kind of a clatter cata blanche that the patient negotiate even the bills medical bills there is no doubt about that but however the certain basic remedial measures that a hospital should take in every step it has to be understood that a conducive atmosphere in the hospital should be created when i say this what probably we need to do is we need to understand both the hospital its all stakeholders needs to understand what is the mandate of the hospital what the hospital staff what is expected out of the hospital staff and what is expected out of the patients who come in these hospitals that is one second the record keeping has to be very very meticulous records may be digitized maybe maybe there may be video recording of these records there are many cases in which patient may record your you, what you are trying to say or you have just casually mentioned before the patient so please don't allow any mobile in the consultation room also keep the records intact they are the evidences they would be required to brief your lawyer so up keep of record is very very important also do not trust the patient and take the history whatever he or she says in several hospitals i have seen especially in gynecology clinic or an obstetric clinic when the patient is asked last ka bai thi she gives a date and doctor blindly writes it down this may go wrong very badly and may boomerang back on the hospital it's a held fact that omission to treat does not automatically constitute medical negligence in a very recent judgment of dr dr harish khurana versus joginder singh in 2021 as late as 2021 supreme court held that merely that a treatment was not done or merely that doctor omitted to do a particular treatment does not constitute medical negligence in this particular case the patient came with renal stone bilateral a better kidney was operated under ga the patient became all right then the subsequent operation a patient died because of some complication of the anesthesia so mere the fact that the particular uh, process was missed on one at one, one time there was a miss of a particular procedure does not by itself constitute medical negligence however repeatedly missing out repeatedly omitting something that is a normal protocol obviously constitute medical negligence and obviously in this particular case the supreme court balanced it out very well documents needs to be preserved as i stated earlier and another point that comes out the hospital says we pay tds so don't involve us in negligence lawsuits which is not possible hospitals are also equally to be blamed if there is a deficiency in service and of course i would state just one thing now is that the matter has to be referred and dealt by law experts and also the various consent forms that the doctors prepare should be from time to time vetted by lawyers and also consent should not be signed in a haste it should be signed at a proper time and no additional new procedure should be done beyond the consent unless the the situation tremendously absolutely merits the same so therefore these are very important uh, take home messages 